Morning, sir. Okay, we're, we're done with our chapter 2. We talks about the introduction to health, no? I'm sorry. Um, history of... of public health. Now we're... We're going to talk about the community health, epidemiology, and behavior, which is your chapter three and one of the coverage for your midterm exam. No? So this chapter will uh, discuss um, particularly measuring health status of communities and it will also introduce to you the concept of, of demography. No? So what is demography? This is a study of, um, of human population in terms of uh, birth, could be death, and an incidence of disease in human population. So, well, I do not know if we can also um, include theories on human behavior. No? Kung discuss pa nata because we are running out of time, but all I, all I want you to, to do is to, to read them all. No? Though chapter 3 dili kayo dani ang coverage sa exam na magawas. Mostly nagi sa chapter 2, but please read them all also so that you have an idea of the different public health terminologies. Okay, we'll, we'll just go by the book. Then, uh, pwede na tawago ng uban to, to read also, no? So, let's start. So, chapter 3, Community Health, Epidemiology, and Human Behavior. So there are a lot of local factors that may affect health in, in the community. And according to WHO or World Health Organization, these factors may differ from one community to the other. And the following factors that I'll be mentioning later on, as cited from the, the WHO, Community Health Needs Assessment of 2001. This was actually published by the WHO original office for Europe. Uh, number one, we have the first factor, the physical environment in which the um, human uh, the people or community people live, such as the quality of the air they breathe and the water they drink, and maybe the food that they can eat around their environment, uh, or the surrounds their environment. Number two. Um, Social environment. No? So this is the level of social and emotional support that people receive from friends, family, or peers. No? Number three, we have poverty, which is a very uh, important factor or significant factor worldwide, which shortens and reduces the enjoyment of life no? Be because of some limitations. Number four, we have behavior and lifestyle. And we have an example here. If you smoke a lot, that's most probably you're vulnerable to lung cancer and coronary heart disease. So a uh, reduction in this behavior will reduce your, or will it reduce the disease. So number five, we have family genetics and individual biology. Now, if you come from a family that is healthy, so most probably you have a better chance of of staying well or living well. So that's actually the, the concept of number five. So these factors remind us of the public health or community health. It's not just a matter of the presence or absence of a disease. Okay. If you are healthy with these following factors, you're probably healthy. No. Um, considered to be healthy also. So in collecting information about the community through a community profiling, if you're familiar with community profiling, yeah? so it's a gathering of data from the community according to different um, 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 sorry, different recommended data, no? 
and community profiling, which are work levels of employment and unemployment. You also have the poverty and income, the environment, and that's it. So we only have three here, okay? Okay, in community profiling, a certain data must be considered in order to get a bigger picture about the community, about the status of, about the stat, the health status of the community. And these are the are the data that are recommended to be considered in community profiling, no? the ones that I mentioned a while ago. We have work and levels of employment and unemployment in a community are fundamental to health for the following three reasons. Number one, we have the occupational diseases. Number two, we have income levels and self-worth. Okay, for occupational diseases, all work affects health, both positively and negatively. Some work is known to cause disease though, such as silicosis. So what, what is silicosis? This is um, okay, silicosis in mind and quarry workers and machinery access among the farm 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 workers. So for silicosis, this is a chronic disease caused by inhaling crystalline or inhaling large amount of crystalline um, silica dust. Okay, so that is our, I mean, one of the examples of occupational disease. No, nga makuha ni mo sa imuhang trabaho. If you're working in, in the hospital, such as um like for example we have the the chemo for a while that just this is a lang in let's admit uh miss corales okay, like for example sa chemo no sa hospital where i worked before if kung sa mga disease nga ako makuha diha kung dili ko makataod sa akong ppe you no know, if i'm going to now if i'm going if i'm not going to wear my ppes and if i'm going to to inhale um, some of the chemo uh, products, then most probably whatever is the effect of the person having that medication could also be the effect to me, no? Sa kuwa. So, inaanagyapan. So, that's occupational uh, disease. We also have here the income levels. That's the amount of income that people earn and has an important influence on, on their health, affecting their ability to choose healthy lifestyle and to access health services. Yes, Medina? Sorry, sir. Okay. Okay, because you have the... um. Okay, it affects your ability to choose healthy lifestyle and access to health services because your, uh, your resources are very limited you now in terms of your money. No, that is your income levels. Okay, you have now your self-worth. The status of an occupation occupation affects how people feel about themselves. People's levels of satisfaction at work contributes to their well-being. Many define people by their work or lack of it. And the employment may feel excluded and lack of paid employment has been shown to contribute to poor health. Okay. Another data that's, that's very important in community profiling is poverty and income, okay? Poverty can be absolute. And it could also be relative. Okay? So poverty can be absolute or inadequate. Ito sa pasiblon si Bentulan guys for a while or inadequate to sustain health, or when a household income is below a certain level, and this makes that person or family to make the basic needs, like uh, like the food, shelter, safe drinking water, you know, and education. And how about the relative, no? relative poverty? So, example here, how poor one person is compared to another, or even if that household ha, uh, received 50% of the salary, no? 
yung madawat sa original salary, still, it's less than 50% of the the household income. And dili po siya makasustain sa living because it's not enough to buy for food and even afford to basic needs. Though, pa, kaon niya po siya, no? Three times a day. But dili lang siya enough para masustain nila ang ginatawag na uh, Uh, life satisfaction or enjoyment. Okay? So in health terms, it is not only the level of poverty that counts, but also the gap between riches and the poor. And the large gap result in big difference in health and life expectancy between rich and poor is also known, is, is known as health inequality. And it is one of the most significant, significant factors affecting health across the world. And therefore, information on this issue is essential. Okay, another data that is important in community profiling is the environment. Okay? The surroundings where people live and work indirectly affect their health and a number of factors should be monitored here. Okay, we have pollution, good sanitation, lack of home, lack of a home, transport systems, you have social support, family and friendship networks, migration, marginal groups, and the last is the opportunities for non-work social activities. Okay, environment where people live and work. No? It could be the workplace also. Number one, we have pollution. Pollution of air and water that causes disease and death. And this is evident throughout the world. Okay. Whether it is lead in petrol or chemical spill from a factory or drinking water contaminated by sea widget. These are just one of the examples no? of pollution. And we have good sanitation. If you have a good sanitation, it eliminates some diseases such as cholera and dysentery to complete. And where it is absent, gastrointestinal illnesses are quickly evident. No? In communities lacking of basic sanitation, um, threats to health arise from the contamination of water supplies by human excreta. No? That's just one of the examples also, guys. If ang inyong environment limpio, no? The third is a lack of home. It also affects the health of individual who doesn't have any home or lack of home. Shelter is important no? for the security, safety and security of individual. Okay, and then example for this is shelter from the weather and environment to sustain a family or place to feel safe. The availability and type of housing reflect local history, culture, the economy, and the political climate. The type, quality, and sustainability of suitability of housing have an important effect on health. Consider the distance of homes from work, pharmacies, schools, and and shops. We have transport system. Transport systems are important to record as they can influence people's access to services, social support, support networks, and employment. Okay, transport may also have impact on health through different kinds of accidents, no? And noise and air pollution brought by jeepneys, no? And some other cars nga gaha, ga, buga og tambun aw oh, ha uh, sana tambutso no na hugaw okay we have a social support it is essential for the well-being of a community we also have here the family and friendship networks provide people with emotional support that is fundamental to well-being social networks can be hard to describe and quantify the best way is to ask people it may be possible for them to describe social networks through flow diagrams we have maps and drawings stories and, and drama okay migration is an another um factor that should be monitored no in environment migration causes disruption to a population as large numbers of people move location. It is often the younger working age population will immigrate, and this is a loss to the population left behind while gain to the community they move to. Okay? 
For example, uh, for this is that if that certain family who are very prominent to that area and they have a lot of skill, skills, no? and especially they're professional. And for example, they are all doctors and they're actually can help the community, you know, um, by catering them to their um, needs, health needs, no? or mga sakit nila. Good, no? So kung mawala sila ng area, then um, kaling area yung ilang gi, giwalaan, ha? Gi, gihawaan, mawadan po silang mga maayong nga doctor. So that's one of the disadvantage of migration also to the to the community from which this family have left. Oh, no? So, isa na siya sa examples. We also have the marginal groups are outside the dominant community yet may form a distinct population themselves. Some groups such as religious, sex, travelers, and gypsies may choose to remain outside mainstream society. Others such as the homeless may be forced into that possession. Access to healthcare is often more difficult for both these groups who may have greater needs for services. Okay? Kina-isolate nila, no? Ilang kaugalingon, no? Kaning marginal groups. Usually, these are the indigenous. Next is the opportunities for non-work social activities. And these are the signposts that can be used to indicate the extent of social cohesion and support in a community. Such activities reinforce a community identity and emotional well-being of individual in the community. WHR World Health Organization identifies destabiliz- uh, destabilizing factors that can affect health status of a community. Like, for example, the factors, uh, one of the factors is war, no? Example lang siya. If there's a war, there's an economic recession and natural disasters. I, if there's, uh, one of the factors are war, economic recession, we also have natural disasters such as earthquakes, floods, and droughts that affect health directly through the impact of uh, mortality. No? That's brought about sa ano nga mga factors, no? sa war, economic recession, and natural disasters. They also affect health indirectly by reducing the resources available. Like for example, if may bagyo, pagkahuman, wala na yung mga pagkaw ng tao. Why? Because the source of food are the are the the vegetation that they they planted no for several months and then um denuded na masyado ang ang mountains and wala na sila makakain kay daot na ang mga ang mga tanom no so may that's one of the um the, the reason why mamapektuhan pa nila ang resources and of course kung wala na sila yung pangkabuhayan, no? It also increases the number of people who are in poverty line. And lowering the social and economic well-being of the population and the community. So they may radically lower population numbers and increase fear and a mental ill health. So in general, there are three broad factors that affect the health of the community and they are, they are as follow. We have physical factors, social and cultural factors. And the third one is the individual factors. These physical factors include the following. We have geography, the environment, community size, and industrial development. For social and um, cultural factors, we have the traditions, no? which include norms and beliefs. We also have economy, it could be micro and macro, ako gamay. And we also have politics, income, and livelihood. For behavior, it belongs to the individual factor. These factors are very important in considering public health or community health interventions. Perhaps the fourth factor that was determined by Minkler and Wallerstein of 1997 is the community organizing. And he defined this community organizing as a process of we, of by which community groups are helped 
to identify common problems or goals. They're working together to to identify problems and what goals na gusto, no? Mobilize resources and other ways develop and implement strategies for reaching the goals they collectively have set. There are various types of community organization according to Rachman and Trofman of 1987. And, okay. And this community organization consists of three distinct, uh, distinct models of practice. We have three here, no? Locality development, process-oriented, creating consensus and sense of cooperation. Social planning, it is a task-oriented, emphasizing rational, empirical problem-solving. And the third one is social action, which refers to both task and process-oriented. No? Hemelman, 1992, developed a more collaborative empowerment model, emphasizing that communities should play a lead role in order to achieve real empowerment and not just community betterment. Generally, the following are the steps in community organizing. No? And this process can actually look back to the first step, kung dili siya, uh, dili niya ma-meet ang goal. Number one, we have problem identification. So you have to identify the problem. Interface with the community. Third, people organization. The fourth step, community profile and assessment. Number five, setting up of goals and formulation of strategies and number six in, number six the implementation of the agreed solutions and strategies and number seven you have to monitor monitor if each goal have been met or not no then evaluate it and number eight sustain gains addressing emerging problems if na problema then balik na po ka sa number one if na ah, and identify then I have to identify it uh, identify uh, the problem no then again bag na po kasal kaduha katulo until mag 8 na pod pag di na pod ma identify no na problema na pod kay wala na meet ang goal then is a time that you have to evaluate and check if tama ba ang problema ngayon mo na identify no? so that's it and the process involved in maintaining community health understanding population and community health data is very important Gathering and analyzing these types of health data is part of the epidemiological study that is conducted in the community or can be conducted in the community. So epidemiology, what is epidemiology? It is the study of the distribution and determinants of diseases and injuries in human populations as defined by Mosner and Kramer, 1985. And the goal of epidemiology is to limit disease, prevent disease, injury, death in a community by health and medical interventions to prevent or limit outbreaks of epidemics of disease and injury. So that is the goal of epidemiology. This is accomplished by describing outbreaks and designing studies to analyze, analyze them and to validate new approaches to prevention, control, and treatment. Though these practices, epidemiologists contribute to our knowledge of how diseases begin and spread through populations and how they can be prevented, controlled, and treated. Okay, this is by Mackenzie Ping, Ping, uh, Pinger and Kotecki, 2012. Okay, for, the, for an epidemiologist, the following data are very important to them, no? Number one, we have the rates. Rates. Okay. Um, Okay, these are important data or data for an epidemiologist. We have rates here, and rates includes also 
different kinds of rage, no? That can be measured in the community. Num okay, we have rate. A rate is a number of events in a given population over a specific period or at a given point in time. Okay, one of the examples of rates are the following. We have the birth rate, the mortality rate, we also have the morbidity rate. Okay, oh no, guys, for a while, uh, uh, two minutes. I'll go to the restroom first. Oh, thank you guys for waiting. Okay. Um, an example of rate would be birth rate. We have mortality rate and morbidity rate. No? So what is a birth rate? This is an average annual number of births during a year per 1,000 persons in the population at the mid-year. So this number of birth over 1,000 persons at mid-year. No? So what do you mean by mortality, guys? So mortality is the number of deaths that occur in a population, no? in the community. Nakai-calculator ya, mamaya ako na yung check. Ano lang ko kaya ako
Okay, like for example, guys, no, sa mortality rate. Okay. Uh, so, the mortality rate is the number of deaths due to a, a specific disease divided by um, the total population and then the community. Like for example, if ang nai patay, namatay siya ni nga pandemic, nai namatay nga 115 no, katao, this, that will be your numerator. And your denominator will be the total population. Sana nga community or kung sa Philippines pa, ibutang na to 115 sa namatay sa Nazareth. For example lang, ani nga disease, tapos ang total population sa Nazareth is 18,000. Okay, divided by 18,000. Let's see if nakuha na ako niya. 115 divided by 18,000. So, that's probably um, 0,1%. Isa. For a while guys ha. Kung 25. Okay. Ito lang guys ha. Okay, so, na lang mo din, Friday din. Ngayon mo, Friday yung class. Ako mo na lang kami. Straight para mante na lang ng shot. Napagalit na siya. Follow up check. Okay, for example, sa guys, I for a while sa akin. Bye. Ito lang guys, sabah kayo dari kita. Okay, like for example, if there are 115 individual or people in the community is affect, um, died because of the pandemic coronavirus in Nazareth, like for example, 115, and the total population of um, the people living in 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 Barangay Nazareth is utang na to 5,000. So most probably nga ay 0.02% nga mortality, mortality rate on that certain area because of the pandemic coronavirus. No? Nangamatay sila na. Nga cost. Then uh, we have the morbidity rate. Okay. That is also the number of individual who is suffering from that kind of disease over population, no? Over or divided by the population living, the total population living in the community. Like for example, na ay nagkasakit ng 5,000 katao, tapos 25,000 ang iyang population, then na ay 0.2% no? na morbidity rate. Sana nga sa kit diha. Ana nga community. Okay? We also have birth rate here is the average annual number of births during a year per 1,000 persons or number of births over 1,000 persons at mid-year. Okay? Under morbidity, an epidemiologist would measure the incidence rate, the prevalence rate, or prevalence rate and the attack rate of a disease. And these are the following rates under the morbidity. We have the incidence rate. Okay? What is incidence rate? The number of new cases. Okay, these are new cases to, <coughs> of a disease in a population at risk. Those in population who are susceptible to or vulnerable to the disease to, in a given period of time. Okay, the prevalence is a combination of the old and the new cases of a disease existing in a population. You have the attack rate which is the proportion of those who became ill after the specified exposure. Okay, these are the three rates. What is the relationship between incidence, prevalence, and prevalence rate? No? It will always depend greatly on the natural history of the disease. Depende sa klase ng sakit. 
No? In case of an influenza epidemic, the in the the IR or the influence uh, the incidence rate may be high, pero dili siya kayo mo contribute sa growth sa um, sa rate sa prevalence rate, no? Why? Maybe because there's a simultaneous rate of disease resolution. Now, prior to spreading that kind of disease pa, no? As mo scatter pa siya, there were um, interventions have been made or, and some solution or resolutions sana nga, nga sakit, no? That's why it was prevented. And then we also have here na ang IR niya is taas at the same time iyang iyang uh, prevalence rate is taas, okay? Na po yan ang case. Now, in case of a disease that has a low or zero cure, actually the, the statement was actually uh, wrong now, but where maintenance treatment permits sustained survival. Where maintenance treatment does not sus sus uh, permit sustained survival, then the incidence rate contributes to continuous growth or prevalence. Okay? Nay mali dere guys, no? Does not sustain survival. Then incidence rate or the incidence contributes to the continuous growth of prevalence, no? If there's no cure, then most probably um, will spread the disease, then it will add on to the number of rates, no? Uh, I mean, it will add on to the number of population na ay sakit. So old and new, then it, and then incidence rate or this incident will contribute a lot to the increase of the rate in terms of prevalence rate, no? So umaw na siya. Rates can be expressed as crude or specific. Crude rates use total population as a denominator. Okay, you have an example here. Your numerator number of live births, that's a crude rate, no? Overestimated mid-year population. And your multiplier here is 1,000. Okay? So, that's it. An example of specific, and it's, it also applies to crude death rate, no? And calculation for this one, but anyway. Um, moving on, we have an example of a specific rate. Okay, an example of a specific rate is cost specific mortality. It measures the death rate of for a specific disease only. No? Death rate for a specific disease, not the death rate in a population each year. No, delay. A specific disease. Yeah. This can be calculated by dividing the number of deaths due to a particular disease by the total population. Okay, another example would be the age specific. Usually they are called uh, cost specific. Mortality rate, and we also have the ASMR, which stands for Age Standardized Mortality Rate. And they're actually reported per 100,000 population. Okay, examples of cost of specific mortality rate are infant mortality rate and neonatal mortality, uh, mortality rate. They are both reported per 100,000 population. So, Sila, 100, population, no? So infant mortality rate, your numerator here will be the number of deaths under one year old, uh, one year of age, no? Kay infant man. No? So there is actually a, um, a criteria for that one, no? Um, to consider a patient who is, who is con I mean, to, con uh, to identify a patient who is considered infant, no? That's one year of a, under one year of age. Um, yeah, can it under one year of age? And your denominator here is the total live births, and your multiplier here is 100,000 per 100,000. Okay, you also have your neonatal mortality rate. Your numerator would be the number of deaths under 20, day, 28 days of age, no? And your denominator will be, um, would be total live births per 100,000 people, okay. Case fatality rate or case fatality ah uh, case fatality rate is a percentage of cases that result in death. It measures the severity of the disease and is proportionate to the virulence of the disease age agent. It is calculated by dividing the number of deaths 
from a particular disease in a specified period of time by the number of cases of that disease of that of the same disease in the same period the resulting fraction is multiplied by 100 and is reported as percentage anyway guys ako ni hatag sa inyo ang maghatag ko kanang case ani na sa case fatality rate uh, regarding sa calculation and I'm going to post this one to you um, maybe after na ako mag-dava, no? Mga Monday or Tuesday. Um, it's just easy to... I, I mean, if you have the cal the formula already and if you have the case, we can actually identify which value belongs to that um, parameter, no? Ani. So, I'll, I'll give that one to you later. Okay, so that's it. The prompt reporting of these numbers is vital to the maintenance of community. Now we're talking about the case fatality rate, especially since most of the time public health leaders are confronted with acute types of diseases, infectious and communicable diseases in nature. That is why the Philippine Department of Health, for example, would issue a list of notifiable diseases that, that every health system must be able to monitor and report on time. Okay, my mong important it ang mga rates, no? This one. So depending on the type of diseases, reporting can be done as frequent as weekly or immediately as the case is encountered in the field, no? Okay, kung sa severe ang usaka kasakit, okay, yaman tama ang atomagong basis always is is this different kinds of rates, okay? Kung sa pud ni intervention na tong buhaton unsa ka lala po lang atong buhaton to prevent the disease from spreading no so that's it that's why it's very important so the manner of reporting it notifiable disease in the philippines is guided by department of health uh, administrative order number 200822 2008222 ano mali 2008-00009 uh, or AO number 2008-0009, okay? Take a look at the table. We have notifiable disease or events reported immediately, okay? And must be reported within 24 hours to the nearest health centers, no? Like the Department of Health. Okay, we have acute classic paralysis, adverse event filing immunization. We have the anthrax down to cluster of diseases, unusual diseases, or threats. We have notifiable disease or syndrome reportedly weekly. We have acute bloody diarrhea down to cholera. Then we also have left spirosis, typhoid, and paratyphoid fever. No? So please read them all. The Department of Health adopts a zero case reporting policy, which means that even in a community has no reported case of any identifiable disease or events mentioned above, no, the health workers still have to report uh, it as zero case. Report Kaponja. Other than reporting incidences of notifiable diseases in the community, a health system, municipal city, provincial would also report a list leading causes of morbidities and mortalities over a specified period of time. Guys, I think tama na tadi sa exam, no? Kaya mura taas-taas na. Taas-taas na. But, I want you to read it. Number 34 to 30 to 41. Okay? Also review the behavior change. No? Um, the various elements of behavior change. We have the key elements here, the threat, fear, response, self-efficacy barriers, until the reactance. And we also have here the theory of planned behavior models. No? So katong the rest of the topics, can you just please uh, read them? No? And like 30% of your exam, maybe 30 or 40, no? 30 siguro. Ah, diri. Ayun ako nakita ang, 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 ang akong gihimog ahapon. 
Okay. So that's it. So please study the chapter, I mean, please study chapter 2 and 3. And over chapter 3, for community health epidemiology and human behavior, please focus on the different factors cited by the WHO community health needs assessment. And some of the data that are very important in data in community profiling, no? uh, work in levels of employment and employment down to the environment. And we have the different factors also under the environment that should be monitored. No? Pollution, marginal groups down to opportunities of non or social activities. And the three broad factors that affect the health of the community, which includes the physical factors, two individual factors, and social cultural factors. Okay, or yung mga examples. Also, and the steps of the community organizing. And please take note of the different definitions, especially the rates. And we have a very simple and easy calculation for the um, mortality rate and morbidity rate and the case fatality rate. Oh. Okay, the case fatality rate, ang yang, ay, I'll give you the case no, for the case fatality rate and together with the calculation so that you have a reference on how to calculate the case fatality rate. I think that's it. No? Okay, um, I'm going to attach a, a quiz during your midterm exam. Wala pa na ako na umanta na pero nag-start na ako kimo. And then, uh, once it's approved by Dina Kino ang TOS, then that's the time that I'm going to print it. No? So that's it. Any questions? Medina? None, sir. Okay, Ray? Wala na? None, sir. Okay. Guys, thank you for for joining your class today and good luck for your exam next week. Your exam will fall probably Okay. Probably by Wednesday siguro Thursday or Friday. Because we're still ay wala nalamid dai dire ana no by Monday. Ah wala man mo minors no? <laughs> Memorize. <laughs> Dili man ay imo ma'am? Dili na. Dili man major man ay. Minor. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. So magdepende daw sa yung minor. So but, but most probably it might fall on Wednesday, Thursday or Friday, no? Sa ang exam. So you still have a lot of time. You have a lot of time to to study. Okay? So sa yun na nato ang exam kay daghan kay may Yes, go ahead. Uh Baldomero? Um, sir, unsa ang type sa exam? Ah, okay. Ang type sa exam, mix sa nga type ng exam, pero walay multiple choice. Mostly essay gid siya ang type sa exam. Nato, no? Comprise yung essay And definite sir, Bili, bili na siya pa nato last time na na mga blank-blank. Bili. Lahit na po. Okay. Katong, usually nyo makitaan sa mga I mean, uh, usual essay nga type of exam, no? So, kato siya. Mix siya nga type sa exam but not multiple choice and not the ones that I, I, I mean, the exam that I, we had previously. No? Lahi mo po siya nga type ng exam, kato kay. Okay? Pero wala siya multiple choice, mostly essay gin siya. Okay, like for example, what are the different rates um included in morbidity you no know, and define each give example murag ana ba no so inana sa class eh so there are five items only ay five items ay sa maybe 10 items sa tanan no ang yung exam then each item na uh, say mga 20 ka buok na points ang isa na ay 10 ang isa na ay 5 ang isa 20 na pod a total of 100 points siguro, no? But wala pa na ako na human. Napa ko sa number 4. 
Okay, naman ko yung calculation, guys. Please bring your calculator, sa. And then, but don't worry, guys, na mag maghatag ko case, scenario, regarding sa case fatality rate. But always remember, guys, sa morbidity and mortality, dito lang ta sa percentage, no? Simple one. No? Ang, num ang sa mortality, for example, number of deaths over community's population. Okay, kung akong ipangutan na ang community lang, then you have to be specific. It should be the community. Like for example, sa Philippines, na nakabutang po dito sa statement, no, Philippines, na sa 3 million katao ang ang namatay. For example, simba ko lang pala yun, no? So, i-divide din muna na siya sa total number of population living in the Philippines. Okay, Philippines may ipangutan na. No? Okay? Times 100% thing. Ah, no. Wait. Times 1,000 ka 1,000 na natang per 1,000. I, I just want to be sure, no? Kung atong multiplier any 1,000 or 10 or 100,000. Pero wala siya, guys, ha? I just want to be sure. Okay, di ko gusto makatago ka, no? Give me 30 seconds. I just want to... 100,000. Okay. 100,000. Okay. That is 100,000. Okay. So you have to multiply it by 100,000. Like for example, guys, no? Uh, sa, sa Nazareth na atay na matay nga 200 katao. Tapos ang population sa Nazareth is 2,500. 2, so ang kanin 0 0.08, imo ni siyang itime sa... Dili, dili niya siya mo. Sa morbidity niya siya. For a while. For a while sa... Um, sir, dili, di ba? Di ba ma-vary man, sir, ang mortality rate if infant ba siya or neonate depending on the fun food. Kasi ko lang mo. Maghatagog kay sa inyo, ha? Yes, maghatagog kay sa inyo, ha? Then, akong i-post na ni eh, para... Para mas masabdan siya, no? Case. Um, for a while, ta. Nawala po. Okay. Sa morbidity rate, no? Um, sa morbidity, maghatag ko. Uh, o, o case, ano, sa mortality. Could be infant mortality rate or neonatal. Magdepende po siya sa number of... Ay, sa... Oh, yeah. Infant mortality rate o... Dini ta muta mortality rate maghatag ko ano no and duha ra man to kabuk nga ano calculation anyway at least you have an idea also for case fatality rate no i'm going to 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 prepare a powerpoint for this one no maybe at one page lang sya then then let's see okay para sure good go no kaya ako ni i verify sa 30000 okay guys I ako na lang siyang impose by by ano siguro by kay naman gud ni sa Davao by Friday Saturday Sunday Monday by Monday no dali ra man kay ni siya as in dali ra kay ni nga formula so, so na lang ko i-verify ani eh, kung unsa ako multiplier na may nakabutang ang multiplier nga 1000 1000 but murag napay buhaton ani eh. no ayan nimo makuha ang percentage okay Hello? Sige, sir. 100. Ay, sa... Nana di ay, nakita na na ako. Bandi ito, mga bot, ma'am, no? Ah, Sunday? 25, di ba? 500. Ano? Ano? Okay. Um, class, uh, by Monday, post lang na ako, no? Para masummarize na ako sa tanan ng calculations. Okay? So, any questions pa? Or any clarifications? Ray, wala na, Ray? Malik? None coming from me, sir. Okay. Guys, thank you for, for your time today and have a blessed Thursday. Bye-bye. Just wait for the PowerPoint, ha? PowerPoint for the for the calculations. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, Paul. Bye, bye. Thank you, sir.